About seven years ago in Queensland, the MV Coast was built and today we're standing on it. It's one of the best ways to see Sydney. Of course, it is the harbour that is one of the landmarks for Sydney and with the view of the city and Russell Crowe's house in the background, you can't get better. One of the greatest finishes the game of cricket has ever seen. Joined us on the 87 foot MV Ghost, Michael Bevan, and we got a chance to pick the brain of the two time World Cup winner. From making his debut in 1994, when he was already a mature 24 year old, Bevan crafted a cricketing strategy. I don't know if I had a cricketing philosophy. philosophy because uh, I can't even say it. Um, I, th I, 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 think I, uh, I think I had a cricketing strategy or maybe a cricketing plan um, that worked for me. And everyone's got a different plan and, and I think that's one of the tricks is that you kind of work out what your role is, what it is you have to do, how you go about it and just try and be as consistent as possible. And so for me it was a lot about batting at number six was minimising risk, being there at the end, ensuring that I was when I was batting with the tail that they were comfortable and understanding, you know, which bowlers I needed to target to enable us to get close to to winning the match. So um, no, you know, a lot of simple stuff and, and, and but 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 it's consistency that's the key that you've got to worry about. Bevan formed the core of what was a golden generation of Australian cricket. His favourite World Cup is 1999, where playing tough was a prerequisite. Ultimately, we, we just had very good players. We had a lot of good players, but we had a lot of match winners. And what I mean by that is just, you know, and I hate to rehash great memories for us and ordinary memories for South Africa, but the semi-final of the 1990 World Cup, um, look, that was, there were so many opportunities there um, for our players, our, our, our best and brightest to come good, to be to, to win matches and they did that all the way through the 99 World Cup after a really slow start so uh, and that happened on lots of occasions. I just used to marvel at how they used to do it. I don't know how they did it but they did and so you know I think we just get used to sort of playing tough cricket and get into the habit of understanding and doing the things that are required to win matches so you know we're fortunate to be in a, a nice era for Australian cricket. De Villiers is absolutely phenomenal um, and, and, and I mean, he's setting new standards, benchmarks in terms of not only averages but strike rates um, and what's possible for a, for a high quality you know, international batsman so he's the cornerstone, the benchmark I felt in terms of talent, in terms of experience um, and in terms of balance that South Africans were one of the the teams that, that had everything covered. When you look at their stats in terms of, you know, the the top four batsmen, the first ten overs, bowling, strike rates, averages, throughout the whole of the statistical analysis of the matches, I mean, they came out in the first top three in just about every facet. So, you know, I'm a big fan of their cricket and a big fan of the team at the moment. Michael Bevan, who claimed 46 50s and 6 centuries in a decade-long ODI career, correctly predicted the semi-finalists and has been secretly cheering on the New Zealand fairy tale run. Well, yeah, look, I've been following the World Cup. It's been really interesting on a number of levels. Um, you know, when you come into it, you have teams that are sort of are favourites, hold the favourite tags. You have your up-and-comers. You have the teams that are, you know are going to present a good solid game and New Zealand continues to show tremendous amount of promise and, sh and shed their under underdog tag. So it's shaping up to be uh, quite dramatic, quite close and I think that it'll be, um, it'll be, it'll be interesting for the finals.
My sea legs have been checked. It's definitely one of the most unique ways and definitely the best way to see Sydney and spend it with a legend of the game.